So as I was saying, in my old house, I had combination formal living and dining room. And in relation to this day, I think I could have done without that. If I could have made my bedroom bigger, it would have been a lot more fun. So the room was 12 feet by 24 feet. So what was the square footage of that room? How would I figure that out? How many square feet did I have tied up in that room? How do you figure out the area? Well, S squared would be if I were talking about a square. But I don't have that. I've got a rectangle, right? So the area is, you can say base times height, mm -hmm. length times width, it's the same thing. So what's the base in this problem? 24. So it's 24 feet, and my height was what? 12 feet. So when I multiply these guys together, you know, have no shame in the game, just come over here to the <coughs> side and multiply this. 24 times 12, 2 times 24 is 48. 1 times 24 is 24, make sure you scoot that over. And you come up with what? 288. So this is 288 square feet, right? That means that I could have drawn 288 squares on the floor that were one foot by one foot, right? Now, let's do some more math here, okay? The square footage of my house was, I think it was about this, 1,875 square feet. That was the size of my house. I had 288 square feet that I never used. So how many square feet did I really use in my house? How do I figure that out? We can subtract this, right? So if I subtract 288 square feet off of this. Now, you know how we talked about like terms? You can combine like terms. Like, you can combine x's together, you can combine y's together, but the exponents have to match up. These guys, if you look at the units, these units are exactly the same, right? If they are not the same units, if you have square feet and just feet, you are not allowed to add and subtract those. If I have square feet and square inches, I cannot add and subtract those. I'd have to do some conversions first, because they are both square units. But here, I've got square feet and square feet. So if I do the subtraction here, how many square feet did I actually use in my house? How much? You say 87? 1587. Okay, well, let me make sure I can do the math right, because I can trust you. I should trust you. Well, I can't do 8 minus, or 5 minus 8, so I'll borrow from this guy to make that 15, so that's 7. I'm going to borrow from this guy to make that a 16, so that's 8. 17 minus 2 is 15, so that's how many square feet I had to work with. I mean, that's not bad. I mean, that's a, could be a fairly large house, depending on you know, where you're from and where you might be living right now. When you have kids and you've got their junk, you can almost never have enough space. That's why you have like a big backyard. You just put all the kids and the toys in the backyard. You give them a dog, that way they're not alone. But we can make things a little bit more exciting here. Right? What if I were to do this? So here's a weird little shape. And let's call this guy eight inches over here. This is 13 inches. This is 
10 inches and 6 inches right here. Can you find the area of this shape? And some of you may be going, why in the world would I ever need to find the area of a shape like this? Well, if you've ever had flooring done at your house, you call these people to come to your house and they do an estimate and they take measurements of your rooms. And they have to deal with weird shapes because is every room in your house a perfect square or rectangle? No. Sometimes you get those really awkward shapes where they kind of cut off a corner just to mess with you, right? So you have to be able to deal with that. And you're probably going, I don't have to deal with that. I'm paying somebody else to deal with that. Well, great for you. But you should also be able to come up with a decent estimate for things like this. Anyway. Now, this is a very weird shape. And I don't have a formula for this shape. But you know what you can do? Evidently not. Okay, I'll help you out here. You can... <laughs> You can do this. If I cut this, you don't have a weird L shape. You have what? You've got two rectangles, right? Can you work with two rectangles? Mm -hmm. Yes. Are you guys familiar with tangrams? Here, I'm going to write this for you. You should look this up. Basically, this is a game where you have a specific shape, a little shadow, and you have all of these weird geometric shapes to fit into that perfectly. Squares, triangles, parallelograms, rectangles, and you have to fit them in there to form this shape. You've got to have them angled and turned just right to fit in there perfectly. There are apps that you can download for free to play around with this. Okay. So it can kind of help you get an idea of like, how can I rearrange this? What are other shapes that I can see here? <coughs> I can see this as two rectangles, and if I do that, if I focus on this area here, and then I can focus on that area. Because if I do that, then this area plus the one that's in black will add up to give me the total area. What's the area for this piece right here? How would you figure that out? Right, it's the product. You already have the height. You have the base, because if it's 10 inches here, it should be 10 inches here because I'm not giving you guys really weird shapes. We're going to assume that all of these guys are nice right angles. It makes the math a lot easier. And that's what we're working on right now is these kinds of shapes. So the area here would be, I'll call this area. I'm going to put a little 1 as a subscript here. So the area of the first piece will be 8 inches times 10 inches. So how many square inches would you be able to fit in that diagram, in that picture? You'd be able to fit in 80, right? So that's 80 square inches. Now we are writing our units correctly, right? Do it just the way I do it and you'll be fine. Now the area of the second piece. So again, we're just calling this guy the first piece and this one the second piece. So how, do you, how would you figure out the area for the second piece? Same way, the base times the height. Now, I've got a question for you. I'm doing 6 times 13. What if somebody does 13 times 6? It's the same thing, right? Because multiplication has that commutative property, which is why I love it. I love it. I'm a little bit clumped. And what's 6 times 13? So this gives me 78 square inches. Do you all agree? So your total area will be the area of the first piece plus the area of the second piece. And what do we come up with for that? What, how do we say it correctly? Right, so 80 square inches plus 78 square inches gives us 158 square inches. Do you all agree with that? 